Hardship happens. We live in a world where no one, and I mean no one, is immune to stuff that is bad stuff happening to them. Now, listen, when I say hardship, please understand, I'm not talking about those things that happen in our life that we did not do ourselves. That is, the bad choices or bad decisions that we made and now we're suffering consequences. We all understand that type of hardship. No one to blame but myself. I made a bad choice and here I am. No, when I speak of hardship today, what I'm speaking of are those things that happened that, well, we did not bring on ourselves. We happen to be in the right place at the wrong time, or maybe in the wrong place at the right time. Either way, we now find ourselves in a very, very difficult spot. It is the things that happen that come out of the blue, if you will, and suddenly I find myself in a very, very difficult hardship. I am in a world of hurt. Hardship happens. But here's the key. Don't let it ruin your life. Now, in a previous video entitled, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? I address the big elephant in the room. That is the question of why. Why do bad things happen to good people? But today, I'm not addressing that why question. If you've not yet seen that video, please check out the link in the description box below. You need to see it to understand how to address that particular question. But today, I'm looking at now what? What do I do now so as not to ruin my life when hardship invades my space, when I find myself in a difficult spot? Well, I want to share with you three stop signs that you and I need to obey. And then we're going to look at three directional signs that we need to follow in order to not let hardship ruin our life. So let's begin with the stop signs. Here's the first stop sign. When you find yourself in a very difficult spot, in a hardship, here is the first stop sign you need to obey. Stop longing. Let me say it again. Stop longing. You need to stop living your life in the rearview mirror. A lot of people, when they find themselves in a very difficult spot, when they're in a season of hurt and hardship, they keep looking back and they keep longing to get back where they were before all of this happened. But people, you need to understand, that day is never going to come. And you can't go back and undo what has now happened. You now are in it, and you're going to have to face it and deal with it. But looking backwards, that is trying to live your life in the rearview mirror, well, you're only going to get discouraged, and you will never move forward. You will forever be stuck right where you are. So first stop sign, stop longing. Let's look at the second stop sign. It is stop broadcasting. When I say stop broadcasting, what I mean is don't be that guy or that girl. You know the one I'm talking about. It's that individual that when you see them coming, you duck for the doorway. You try to get out of the way of these people because you know you're about to get thrown on a wet blanket of hurt and complain and sorrow and pain, and it's never ending. Listen, if you're in a place of hardship, one of the keys is to obey this sign, stop broadcasting. That doesn't mean you can't ever talk about the situation you're in. You just need to limit those to whom you talk with. Maybe a close, trusted friend, obviously your spouse, more importantly, a trained professional counselor. But when it comes to the people that give and take in your life, that move about in your life, don't keep dropping all of the bad news. Don't keep broadcasting to them all of your pain and hurt because in time you will become that guy or that girl that everyone avoids. And where you end up, you will end up isolated and alone and it's not a good place to be. So stop broadcasting. And finally, here is the third stop sign that we need to obey and that is stop comparing. Listen, 
This is really easy to do. I know, I understand. When Debbie and I were going through that 30-year period with our sons, as their lives began to simply evaporate, they got weaker and weaker, and everything we did was difficult. A simple outing was a massive undertaking, and it was easy to look around and see other people who were not having to deal with what we were dealing with. And it was easy to start comparing our life with their life, and immediately what will come to your mind is, this is not fair. Well, guess what? It isn't fair. It never was fair. It never will be fair. And nobody ever promised you or me that life would be fair. One of the worst things you can do when you're in a hardship, one that is not of your making, but it's come into your life, is to start comparing your life with other people. Don't do that. If you continue to do that, I assure you, you will start becoming resentful. You will resent their good fortune as opposed to your misfortune. And you will start becoming bitter. And without realizing it, you will begin to strike out at people because of all the anger and the frustration and the bitterness as you look around and go, why do they have it so good and I don't? You need to observe this stop sign and obey it. Stop comparing. So three stop signs when you find yourself in a difficult spot. Stop longing, stop broadcasting, and stop comparing. But now let's shift it over into a positive area. Let's look at some directional signs that we need to follow. Now these are very important. And the first of these is a directional sign that reads, scenic overlook. James writes in James chapter 1, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. I know that when you read that particular scripture, and many of you probably are aware of it, you're wondering how on earth could I ever consider my situation joyous. Well, part of the problem is many people, when they look at this word joy, they equate it with the word happy, and the two are not the same at all. The word happy simply implies that my circumstances are good, therefore, emotionally, I'm happy. But this word joy is an entirely different word. It's speaking of something far greater, something far bigger. It's looking at that directional sign that we just read, scenic overlook. Let me read to you another scripture found in Hebrews chapter 12. The writer says, Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Did you, did you hear that? who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. What's going on here? What is happening here is that when Jesus was nailed to that cross, when he was hanging in agony on that cross, he was looking out and he was looking at things from God's perspective, that scenic overlook, if you will, that big view. Because joy is the ability, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of your emotional state, to rise up and see the bigger picture. And what you see is that indeed God, God our Heavenly Father, is very much in control and very much loves us and is working out His purposes, which is why it says that Jesus, had uh, hanging on that cross, if you will, he could, because of the joy that was set before him, he could see what he was getting ready to do and the impact that his life, that is him giving voluntarily his life on that cross and the subsequent resurrection and ascension to the right hand of the Father, what that would do for all of humanity. That's why we need to get God's perspective, God's scenic overlook, if you will. You know, I remember when we were in the throes of this situation with Roger and Philip, and Debbie would often have people come up to her and say, oh, Debbie, you're such an inspiration. And I can remember privately with me, she would often say, Tracy, 
I'm so tired of people telling me I'm, I'm an inspiration. I mean, I appreciate it, but I don't want to be an inspiration. I just want to live a normal life. But somewhere along the, uh, the road, if you will, Debbie began to understand that scenic overlook directional sign. She began to realize that she was in the situation she was in, and it certainly wasn't going away, and that indeed God was doing something very, very special in her life. And she was able to rise up and get a bigger picture and realize, you know what? My life can be an inspiration to others. It can be an inspiration of the grace of God, Him working through my life, and I can give hope to others. People, that's what it's all about. Joy is the ability to rise above your situation and see the bigger picture, see God, and see what God is doing in your life in the midst of the hardship. Hey, follow that directional sign, scenic overview. Let me give you another directional sign, and that is overhead power lines. Overhead power lines. Paul writes in Philippians 4, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Now, this particular Bible verse is often taken out of context and misused in some really bad ways. But in this context, in the context of suffering and hardship, this is exactly what Paul was getting at. Because Paul suffered tremendous hardship by virtue of his stand and his proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel. He suffered at the hands of many. And yet he could say, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. This is really, really important. That's why you need to follow this directional sign, overhead power lines, because you've got an overhead power source that is now running directly to you if indeed you are a Christ follower. For when you came to faith in Jesus and submitted your life to his lordship, he came to live in you. That is, the Holy Spirit brought all that he has and has given it to you. And you now have that strength. And you need to know and understand that strength that indwells you in the midst of this hardship. You need to get to the place where when Paul wrote to the Colossians in chapter 3, he said that Jesus Christ is my all in all. He is everything in my life. And I can tell you, when Debbie and I were going through that 30-year walk and it was difficult, one thing that we always could rely on was the grace of God and the fact that we could get through this day and the next day and the next day because of Christ who lived in us and was our strong one. He was the one who gave us that strength. See that directional sign? Overhead power lines. And then finally, one more directional sign that you need to be very aware of, and that is slow pedestrian crossing. Let me say it again because it's important. Slow pedestrian crossing. Paul writes in Romans 12, be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Here's what you and I need to do when we're in a very difficult place, when hardship has surrounded and invaded our lives. We need to see the people in the crosswalk if you will, of our lives. We need to see those people that are crossing back and forth, back and forth throughout our life. We need to see them and slow down so that we can get the focus off ourselves and on those people that are in the crosswalks of our lives. One of the biggest, biggest setbacks for people in hardship is they get very self-focused. And it's easy to understand why. It's hard. When you're in the middle of a war, if you will, hardship all around you that you didn't bring on, it just came, it's hard. And it's really hard when you're looking around realizing most everybody else isn't dealing with what you're dealing with. And so it is very, very easy to get caught up in yourself. But you don't want to do that. You need to start seeing other people and begin to focus on them. And I'm telling you, it will liberate you. You need to slow pedestrian crossing. 
you need, <clears throat> excuse me, see those people that are crossing back and forth in your life and celebrate their good fortune. Listen, this is something I learned when I was going through this process, when Debbie and I were in the throes of this hardship. People would often come to me because as a pastor, people would come and share with me all the things going on in their life. And often they would share their good fortune, vacations they had been on, trips that they had been on, things they were doing, things, by the way, that I could not do. There was no way that Debbie and I could take a vacation. We couldn't leave Roger and Philip. When they got really, really in a serious place, it was hard. But as I would listen to other people, the Holy Spirit began to teach me, bless them, Tracy. Bless them. Bless their good fortune. Enjoy it and celebrate it with them. And so when they would tell me things that I knew I could not do, I would simply say, wow, that is fantastic. I am really happy for you. Tell me more. Tell me more. What else did you do? And as I would do that, and listen, I'm not being tried here, but I'm telling you, as I did that, it was so incredibly liberating because it got all the focus off Tracy and began to shift it over to them. And it freed me. Follow those directional signs. Scenic overlook. Get God's perspective. Joy. Overhead power lines. Know and live in the power that is yours in the Lord Jesus Christ. And slow pedestrian crossing. See the people and celebrate their fortune that are going back and forth in the crosswalks of your life. And I tell you, if you will obey the stop signs and if you will follow the directional signs that I've given you today, you can actually get through hardship and it does not have to ruin your life. Listen, thanks again for joining me and being a part of this experience. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, if you'd hit that like button, and if you've not, not yet become a subscriber, please hit that subscription button as well. And again, the video that I shot, that is why do bad things happen to good people? If you haven't yet seen that video, check it out. There's the link because you need to see that because it answers first the question of why. And then today in this video, we address the issue of now what? What do I do? Well, again, thanks so much for being a part. And as always, God's very best to you.